biceps. Bulked up baseball players testified to Congress about steroids. Mark McGuire pleaded the fifth. Jose Canseco said everyone does it. Rafael Palmero swore he didn't, later tested positive. Kobe Bryant did a fast break from rape charges, while in Atlanta and Seattle, pro team coaches plead guilty to drunken wife beating. Wilt Chamberlain's best-selling autobiography proudly claimed 20,000 plus bedroom scores. New heroes, new social changes. Boomers and younger don't remember May 17th, 1954, but I do. That's the day the Supreme Court ruled, thou shalt integrate your schools. My junior high teacher broke into tears. She knew it was the beginning of the end of the world that she knew. What she didn't know was how far, how fast. December 1955, Rosa Parks just wanted a seat on a Montgomery bus. Her stand for human dignity lit a firestorm. 200 plus years of racial frustration came to a head. By 1958, Martin Luther King was on his way to becoming a national hero. Why 1958? Why Martin Luther King? Probably, primarily, because of television. Actually, we always knew the truth. Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin in 1858. It was all there, the hate, the prejudice, the evil. 1920s and 30s media covered the whole sick mess. But for decades, millions looked the other way, denied reality, cause it was unpleasant and lordy. We didn't want to deal with anything unpleasant, but television left us no choice. We were there emotionally with George Wallace at the schoolhouse door, snarling police dogs, mauling peaceful marchers, children blown up at Sunday school. People were attacked at lunch counters trying to order hamburgers that probably weren't worth eating. As a nation, we finally went, wait a minute, what's happening? What's right, wrong? How do I stand in all this? We've come a long way in human relations, but we keep backsliding. Today's music slams ugly issues in your face. Listen to U2, Green Day, Black Eyed Peas, Eminem, musical graffiti, pleading for justice, equality, recognition, racial minorities, immigrants, gays, women, religious hardliners are still being stalked by blind stupidity. Television's awesome power exploded in 1963. Everyone in their late 40s and older can remember November 22nd, 1963, the day John Kennedy died in Dallas. Those who lived it will never forget exactly where they were, the color of the sky, hearing people cry. That day, that moment was the first time in history as we know it around the world. Hundreds of millions of people simultaneously experienced the same event. The earth froze emotionally. An SEE of primal intensity still there for instant replay. The assassination, the funeral, the aching sadness. For millions, John Kennedy was idealism personified, elected on television, lived in Camelot on television, and died for real on television. It wasn't fake like in the movies. It was real death, emotionally felt. Older generations didn't know what death was when they were 10. For them, death was part of the adult world. But TV's truly democratic. It spares no one. These people watch their heroes die. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, Jim Morrison, John Lennon, teacher Krista McAuliffe aboard the ill-fated Challenger, Kurt Cobain, Princess Diana. By the late 60s, the blood, the death, the gore of Vietnam was electronically mainlined into American minds and guts day after day as they sat in their own homes trying to eat their evening meal. The war we didn't win, whose psychological wounds still fester. Robert McNamara was Secretary of Defense. He finally admitted in 95 that Vietnam was horribly wrong and confessed that in their hearts are leaders knew it. Eventually, someone will tell the truth about Afghanistan, Iraq, and Iran.